Hello and welcome to the works. I'm Ben Peltier. And I'm Ben Che. Later on the show, conductor Vivian Nip and theatre director Mo Lai Yan Chi will be here to give us a sneak peek of the Hong Kong premiere of The Book of Longing. First produced on stage in Toronto in 2007, it's a song cycle with music by Philip Glass based on the poetry of singer-songwriter and poet Leonard Cohen. From the way a book feels in our hands, to the typographic design, to the penmanship of a handwritten letter, paper and text has many ways to convey human thoughts and emotions. Artist Mavana Chen is bringing a new dimension to books and texts. She's doing it through knitting. I always repeat the same thing, like just doing this way of knitting. Not like too complicated to create pattern, color. The repetitions kind of like meditation that you just sitting and then do the same thing. Almost like nearly 20 years already. But I still enjoy a lot, like much, much more. And when you knit together, you create the pieces like a ocean and no border in between. Movana Chen's work weaves people's lives and stories into a new form. It combines elements of fashion and fine art, both of which she previously studied. In her work, she deconstructs and reconstructs meaning and content by transforming books and other written texts through knitting. Currently on show at the M Plus Focus Gallery, the 16-meter-long Knitting Conversation was first shown in a 2013 exhibition as part of what Chen describes as the most intense project she's undertaken so far. To date, this ongoing project has involved 300 participants from around the world and around 400 books. So the journey is like you don't know who you're going to meet, but through their book, when you read, not just you know about the story in the book from the, the writer, though, and also it's from the person, how you need to a relationship between people, like knitting a friendship, you tie a knot, you get to know each other, and you stay at their home, learn about their culture. Chen invited family members, friends, students, and strangers to give her a book, one that had special meaning for them or evoked special memories. The books were then shredded and knitted into new forms by participants. By 2017, over 300 people had already taken part. In the whole pieces is paper, but you can see one special piece that you can see the red. That is the wool, the yarn, and it's from my grandmom. The red is kind of the symbol of the celebration and happiness, and bring together is good with this happiness color. The latest phase of this knitting conversation is planned to continue at M Plus until early August. Newcomers can still take part in the project, although the source material for the knitting has now changed. Now I'm collecting map and I'm collecting passport. So I invite people to, to contribute their expired passport and we knit together. So to sharing same the concepts, it's just one identity like this, how we, we can knit and share. The interest in books, maps, passports, and even love letters may owe its inspiration to how often Chen has moved from place to place. Born in Shenzhen, she relocated to Hong Kong with her parents as a child. Later, her family went to Singapore, where she spent her secondary school years. In 1997, she moved to London to study fashion design. Since 2021, she's been based in Portugal. Working with raw materials that were once repositories of individual histories, observations, ideas, and feelings, Chen expands individual communications into broader networks and connections. On show at Flowers Gallery, Word of Heartbeats presents over 10 works from her Love Letters series. It includes over 180 handwritten communications between Chen and her friends, family, and other loved ones, written between 1989 and 2023. 
So all this love letter is also documenting all my life in where I grew up. This love letter is number 15 in 1998 and 2010 is from my family, my sister. They from London, they wrote it to me. So you can see the color with blue or red in Christmas time. This love letter is number 13, is in 1997 when I studied in London. The letter from one of the boyfriends on that time, when you travel, when you on board, they take the ticket, the first page, then you can still see the two more layer, the chasing paper of the flight ticket. And then I sharing it and transform together in these pieces of the moment in 1997. All my words to see is stillness, but kind of I can listen to the heartbeat, listen to their calling, my friend, all the memory is so alive there. So give me the energy, I still, I love this traveling adventure. It's like all our life and people, everyone so unique, so beautiful. The memories and stories in her work have been retold and transfigured not only through knitting and sewing, but also through dialogue and movement. In early March, Chen and contact improvisation dancer Francisco Borges performed Questioning the Line in Central. It's a development from her early wearable art series, Body Container. The idea, which incorporates shredded maps collected from friends worldwide, was developed during the COVID-19 pandemic. It's already been presented in Portugal and other parts of Europe, and there are plans to present it in more places later. The isolation, like everyone in their like, sadness and like, loneliness. And this word, we want a map, we need for the knitting and to connecting everyone together. We are always have someone supporting each other. We first thinking like in this kind of questioning the business between city people, how our life in between human and nature. It's incredible to be inside of the work and to feel kind of invisible, but very visible at the same time. And especially because I can see people, but people cannot see me. It's amazing to see the reactions, like everybody is reacting in a different way. And it's something they have never seen before, something new in their day. There are many lines to question, but mainly it's to question the lines that divide us the lines that separate people and separate also humans from nature. Elsa Jean Dudu and Zulfan Ottoman are French artists, now based in Hong Kong. Joined by Japanese photographer Takeshi Shikama, they are currently presenting a photo exhibition inspired by Hong Kong's cityscape and natural world. To inspire a sense of inner calm and harmony with nature, Jean Dudu represents Hong Kong's urban energy in textured art pieces. Zilvan Otoman focuses on the beauty of empty spaces, nature's resilience in the city, and the effects of time on the landscape in a series of photographs printed on bamboo fiber washi paper. For Takeshi Shikama, who prints his works on handmade Japanese gampi paper, the more he becomes attuned to Hong Kong, the more he becomes aware of the richness and sometimes mystery of the city's greenery. The exhibition, presented as part of this year's Le French May Arts Festival, is on show until the 1st of June at Boogie Woogie Photography. Do email the gallery beforehand to arrange your visit.
Welcome back. The Book of Longing is a compilation of poems and drawings mostly created at a Zen monastery on Mount Baldy in California by singer, songwriter, and poet Leonard Cohen. Cohen and composer Philip Glass were admirers of each other's work and had talked about a poetry and music collaboration for many years. When they met in Los Angeles around 2001, Cohen had the manuscript of Book of Longing with him. He read the whole book to Glass, and by the end of the evening, they had agreed to produce a full-length music and poetry project. A piece for ensemble, singers, spoken word, and imagery, Book of Longing sets 22 out of 167 of Cohen's poems to music. It had its world premiere in Toronto a year after Cohen's book was published. The musical cycle is being performed in Hong Kong this Friday at Free Space. Conductor Vivian Ip and director Mo Lai Yan Chi, along with co-artistic director Nina Wong, are here to tell us more. All right, Nina, Mo, Vivian, welcome to the works. Thank you. So we're here today to talk about Book of Longing, the collaboration between Philip Glass and Leonard Cohen. Um, to, to begin with, what was the inspiration behind bringing this show to Hong Kong? Well, um, originally, I and Nina formed, um, founded this Anima Ensemble, and we hope to promote contemporary chamber operas, musical theater, and chamber music in Hong Kong. And then we came across this work, um, Book of Longing, and then we found it really interesting because the composer, Philip Glass, is one of the most significant um, contemporary composers in the, let's say, classical music world. world. Leonard Cohen is a pop figure. I mean, he's not only a poet, but also a singer-songwriter. And then we find this collaboration between them very interesting. And this is one thing that um, we hope to bring like people or artists from different fields. I mean, this cross-boundary collaboration. And this is one thing. And then on the other hand is that Book of Longing, the theme itself about different types of longing. And despite these poems are by uh, Leonard Cohen himself, um, we actually see part of us in the poems too. So we believe that each of us could relate to the poems. So it's also a message that we hope to bring to the audience and to connect with the audience. Right, and this Hong Kong adaptation, how different is it from the original version? Uh, can you paint us a picture of what happens in the show? Well, I think um, well, this time it's all by local performers, no matter um, the musicians, the singers, and uh, we have other aspects like, you know, putting in, like yeah. we have a movement artist, and also we have a sand painting artist. So um, I think it's like, uh, especially I feel like um, the content of Lenny Cohen who you know, writes the lyrics or the poem is quite relatable to nowadays Hong Kong or to the, to the world or to the society that we are living in at the moment, to be honest, because a lot of the poems are relating to love um, which is right, quite like a universal subject, mm. and also to war or to suffering. And uh, so a lot of, you know, for example, desire, that is the key word. And I think it is also, as Vivian said, is really relatable to everybody. And especially at now, now in Hong Kong. And it's, it's interesting you mentioned that, that it's a, it's a more a local sort of perspective as well. So yeah. tell me about the actual process. You know, you're adapting it for Hong Kong, but you had freedom to choose what went on as well. So how did you decide on the extra bits that were not written down or set in stone? We will have another um, like section, like stage rehearsal, which we would um, do a lot of research. Mm. Uh, we read uh, not only just the poems, but uh, for example, the bibliography of Alan Cohen. And we talk through with each song or each poem that what does it mean to, to us? Or how does it relate to us and how we could visualize it? how we could um, experience it instead of just listening to the melody, but also, um, you know, experiencing what he's trying to talk about. For example, this time we try to make it like an immersive um, mm. experience because this um, piece or this uh, book of longing, the whole book, is actually Leonard Cohen spent like six years in a Zen garden. And, uh, you know, it's like a meditation. But at, at the same time, he has a lot of thoughts. Mm. He has a lot of thinking and uh, he still creates. So we try to mix these two worlds together. So it, we have like immersive um, experience for some of the audience. They will be on stage with us, like uh, in a Zen garden. Yeah. 
<laughs> and also um, for for musicians as well. I know that you're not just simply going to be playing music; you also mm -hmm. be acting as well. Yes. So we do. tell us a bit about that that process of being a musician, but also doing other things. Uh, normally, musicians just uh, sitting there and play their music. Mm. Uh, but for this production, I want to have every musician get involved into the whole uh, production as acting, not just playing the music, so they can feel more and uh, feel more of the music. Yeah, because for me, I actually I did uh, pretty much of the theatre work, not just playing the music, such as like uh, Tandon's Immersive Opera last year mm. uh, in Chile Nunnery. And also I've been acting uh, in the La Traviata by the Modern Musical years ago. Uh, I'm also a character, so I, I feel like I really enjoy to be acting and, uh, and, uh, and meanwhile playing the music. So I can have more information for my music as well. Yeah. Right. And Mo, I want to ask you. I mean, uh, normally you direct uh, actors on yeah. stage and in film, but here you're directing musicians as well. Is that process different? It's really fun. I really enjoy to you know to work with them because um, because this time I want to mix two worlds together. Mm. It's not like music you know and also performance are separately. I want them to be you know in the same world. So actually they're part of us. They're, I, I was like telling them you are also a character. Right. You're not just musicians because in this Zen garden it's like um, for example, I, I would say um, the singers they're representing Leonard Cohen mm. because you know say they're singing out the the lyrics. It's like what Leonard Cohen was writing about, and then. And, um, and then, in, as I said, they, um, we set up the world as like a Zen garden. So <laughs> I was imagining, you know, uh, for example, conductor Vivian, yeah. she's like Roshi in a Zen garden. She's like, oh, I'm, you know, because she's conducting. She's like, you know, talking, you know. <laughs> so they're mingled with right. the performance. And in terms of the actual appearance, um, is there a costume design? What, what, what's that like? Um, because Leonard Cohen himself has a very uh, iconic, you know, image with the, his hat sure. and also the suit. And also, uh, as we said, like um, this world, like we try to create a, like a Zen garden. And so it's a mix of both. It's like a modern suit mm. and also the kimono. If I'm not wrong, okay. you know, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, because I think um, Leonard Cohen himself has a lot of different identities or different faces in, throughout his life. And so I want to, you know, try to have different perspe perspectives of his life. Mm. And so it's like a mix of, you know, different status of himself. Maybe he is a meditator at the same time. However, sometimes when he meditates, he still thinks about, you know, love <laughs> or his own desire. Yeah. Still, Lenny Cohen is still there. So it's a mix of himself, but different faces. Mm. Yeah. Now, the whole program is called Book of Longing, and it's a lot to do with, you know, longing. And it's not, would you say that musically, is, is it more not so, I don't know, if happy is the right word. It, it's, it's more contemplative. It's, the, the, it's more a bit darker perhaps can you tell me about you know what's your interpretation of the music yeah i think uh because i'm a fan of leonard Cohen, and uh, uh what i love about him is yes he's really dark i think mm. it's because of his um experience of life mm. you know his dad was you know died of world war one he gone through world war two he's a jewish and uh and of course a lot of different kind of you know love um relationships that he you know ha has encountered I think, yeah, it's only because he, his life experience or his journey is dark. So the, the, the last um, album is like, you want it darker. However, he's, uh, he has a great sense of humor. So he can make all these sufferings kind of like lighter. And, uh, and uh, I think he's very honest. That's what I love him the most. So he can make um, some big topic or subjects down to earth relating to you. So I think this is also the style of this piece too. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about the music of Philip Glass in general. How would you define Philip Glass's music from your perspective? Um, I mean, a lot of people call him, I mean, he belongs to the minimalism stream, mm. um, but he also believes that like uh, Book of Longing is a departure from his previous works. So of course you see traits of his music, mm. but um, he also named it as musical theater. And that I think he really tries to 
to use his music to uh, match, I mean, to, to collaborate with Leonard Cohen, to, to reflect the world of, of Leonard Cohen. Right. Yes. So I know that in the, in the Book of Longing, 22 um, pieces, but then there's some highlights as well. One of them is Mother, Mother. Can you tell us a bit about this uh, piece, Mother, Mother? Mm -hmm. For this Mother, Mother poem is about, um, uh, like, reincarnation. So. Um, Although someone you love has passed away, in his case, his mother, but she might still exist somewhere um, as another person or even as, let's say, a, a lovely dog that accompanies you and stay with you. So um, instead of being very sad about people who pass away, um, we could see it in a more positive way that we are still surrounded by people we love. Right. And for, for Philip Glass setting this poem, Mother, Mother, he, he writes it in a mixture of 7-8 rhythm and, and in 3-4 rhythm. So there's a little bit of instability and a bit of wit in, in the music to, to uh, represent the, the meaning of the poem. Sounds very interesting. So thank you all of you for coming in today and uh, I look forward to hearing more about the show. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. She 